Let's do something interesting today. Today I want to talk about sand as a thermal heat storage for solar collection devices. Uh, the beautiful thing about sand is it's dirt cheap. And when I'm talking dirt cheap, a lot of you may even have it on your property or you can buy it at really cheap rates. There are two, well, three main thermal storage devices or materials um, that are cheap that you can use. One is water. Water has fantastic properties. The problem with water is it only goes up to just before 100 degrees Celsius. At around 90 degrees Celsius to 100, you start getting into the boiling problem. And then there's materials like clay, um, which work well, but sand, often it's granite sand, has a melting point well over a thousand degrees Celsius. Now, the beautiful part about that is, unlike water where you can only go up to a hundred degrees, sand you can go two, three, four hundred degrees easily, and it's not a problem whatsoever. So in this video, we're gonna look at using sand as a thermal battery and take a look at the possibilities and what's required to do that. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing and alternative energy, which is what we want to use to heat our greenhouses. Um, I'm going to mention something here about the like button. Sure, it helps me when you hit the like button. whoop de doo who cares? But the beautiful thing about hitting the like button for you is that if you like this kind of content, YouTube's algorithm will serve you up suggestions of similar content like this if you hit the like button. So go ahead and hit it if you like what we're talking about. I want to talk a little bit about how we use energy and how much we use. People often think of solar energy as electricity, photovoltaic panels, things like that. But in reality, we use over 50% in most areas, and where I live, it's even higher because we get really cold here because I'm north of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Of our energy usage is heat. So right now I'm using a wood boiler and it's great but it's a lot of work. You have to stuff it twice a day. You have to get the wood or buy the wood. I want to use solar to collect that heat to get rid of more than 50%. And if you look at the chart here, it's, that's an average for North America. It's well over 50% of my heating costs for hot water and for space heating can be eliminated if I use solar and there's no work, unlike my wood boiler. So my purpose in this video is to explore a thermal battery something that I can collect heat with in the summertime, as well as collect it through the fall and the spring and the winter, and use that heat when I need it on demand. Seasonal heat storage. And we're gonna explore sand as an opportunity to do that. Now, for collecting heat, if you're using water, you just use an evacuated tube array, and they work rather well, and they'll get your water up to 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or Celsius, actually. But in using sand, we need more temperature. The beauty of sand is you can heat sand up to a thousand degrees Celsius. So we want to use a different kind of solar collector. And these are solar collectors that you can build yourself. And there's actually people that build them on YouTube. The first one is a parabolic dish. And as you can see in the picture, it's a curved dish that the beauty of this one is a fellow named Sergey in the Ukraine built a system like this and you only have to move it about once every two weeks to keep it on target. And he was getting some great temperatures out of this, close to 200 degrees Celsius and even better. The next is concentrated solar and there's huge solar plants in this where mirrors all focus the sun's rays on one point and heat that point up like crazy. So what I'm hoping for from you guys is some ideas on which system is better. Concentrated solar and how I could make that work to heat sand or a parabolic trough or dish and running maybe an oil through it. But that being said, I'm really, really, this is in the planning stages right now and I'm hoping to get some comments and some ideas of how to go forward with this. So let's hear what you got to say. Now back to the sand and thermal energy storage, if we're going to store energy in the ground on a personal scale like this, you need to have it insulated. Now, there are big projects like Drake Landing 
that use very little insulation, but they use the size of the actual storage device. And that, because heat moves slowly through rock and through sand, acts as insulation, but on a large scale, it works better. On a small scale, for a house or a greenhouse, we need to be looking at insulating the walls, the bottom and the top of our storage area. So to use sand, yes, you're gonna need a little more sand than you would have used as water, but sand is cheap and water containers that can hold water at high temperature are extremely expensive. So my thought in containing the sand is to actually pour aircrete, about a foot of aircrete on the bottom of an excavated area and then building sidewalls that we fill with aircrete or pre-building aircrete sidewalls to contain the sand and then aircrete on top of course as well with some sort of pipes that run through the sand for injecting heat and withdrawing heat. So that's the next stage that we're getting into is actually injecting and withdrawing heat is the type of tubing we're going to need. When using water you can get away with PEX because you're not going over 100 degrees Celsius and PEX is good to 80 or 90 degrees and especially if you use Alumapex uh, that has the aluminum lining in it you're fine to 100 degrees and it's not going to have a problem. But when we start using concentrated solar or parabolic troughs to get two and 300 degree liquids, PEX isn't going to work anymore. So we need to use copper, stainless steel. Once again, I'd really like some help and some ideas of what the most affordable metal or other material that we can use as tubing to heat the sand thermal battery and extract heat from the sand thermal battery. And that being said, if the sand thermal battery is coming in at two, 300 degrees Celsius, I think there needs to be a secondary thermal exchanger or a mini battery that's most likely made out of water in the two to 400 gallon range, which is a lot more affordable and a lot more readily available in metal that's insulated. And that material, because you can regulate the water better, will then go to your house or your greenhouse to heat it. Sending two, 300 degree liquid into your house might be a little dangerous. So I'm thinking we need to look at a two stage system here. Thoughts? Now, getting the heat into the house is pretty simple. We just use radiators and I actually have baseboard radiators that use convection heat to heat my house as well as sometimes I'll put a fan on them. In my greenhouse, I have a modified car radiator with a fan behind it and it pumps out an enormous amount of heat. But this is pumping from my wood boiler at about 70 degrees Celsius, give or take. I would be a little worried once again, and the cost of the piping might be the issue because of distances of running anything much over 80 degrees Celsius. So once again, that's why I think there needs to be a secondary distribution storage tank for water coming from the sand thermal battery, which can hold a lot of heat and over the course of the summer and the fall can be heated up to hopefully 300 degrees Celsius or higher. Once again, there becomes another problem is what kind of liquid can we use from the parabolic trough or concentrated solar into the sand that can handle that kind of heat? Oil is good for, I don't know, 200, 250 degrees Celsius. Um, there are things like liquid salts, but I'm not quite sure how they work. And once again, then maybe we're looking at pumps that can get very expensive. Um, if we stick to oils or things like an oil, I know olive oil is good to up to 300 degrees Celsius before it boils. The automotive pumps that run in your cars can push the liquid around and are designed to handle that kind of heat. But I'm open to ideas here and please keep this budget conscious. We can do anything if we spend millions of dollars but if we want to do something affordably, if we want to build a system under ten, fifteen thousand dollars that can heat a house and heat a greenhouse, I mean, this is a lot of heat. Something that's capable of putting out a hundred thousand BTU an hour that can heat regularly, sustained amounts is something that's very appealing. Especially if, unlike a wood boiler, you don't have to touch it all winter other than possibly with a parabolic trough, adjust it once every two weeks, takes you a couple minutes, big deal. 
So this is an idea that I'm looking at exploring and I really want your help. And please in the comments, talk about this. Give me some ideas, give me your thoughts. Um, it's possible to do it with water, but I don't see it. The water holds a lot of heat and it holds upwards of several times more heat than sand. But the storage containers and insulating those storage containers is a fortune. And then the storage capacity, the water, you can't take the water much over 80, 85 degrees Celsius, and you can't take it below 50, 60 degrees Celsius, or you're not gonna get much heat out of it. So you've got a very short range of usable heat there. Whereas sand, if you can pump it up to three, four, 500 degrees Celsius, that's hundreds of degrees Celsius before you get back down to 80, 90 degrees. There's an enormous amount of usable, storable heat there. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the like and subscribe buttons. What do they do for you? Well, YouTube's algorithm, if you start hitting like on videos, on subjects that you're interested in, will start showing you more videos like that. That's what like does. That's what subscribe does.